Hi, everyone. We are talking today with main founder of Scarecrow Studio, creator of the new point-and-click adventure game Three Minutes to Midnight, which will be available on Steam around November of 2019. We're happy to have you here today. Hi. Ah, hello, guys. Happy, happy to be here. Yeah, we, we are happy to have you here. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, can you say something about yourself and about Scarecrow Studio? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm Jan Serra. I'm game director at at Scarecrow Studio, and I'm the creator of the Point and Click Adventure Three Minutes to Midnight. Okay, and what were your beginnings? Uh, my background is uh, I come from from studying MBA. I've been working on engineering like for 15 years, and a couple of years ago, I decided to change a little bit what I was doing because it was quite stressful and quite boring. <laughs> and I always love Point and Click Adventure games. Monkey Island is one of my favorites, so. I decided to write a story and I created this game. I put a little team together that maybe we will talk about them later and started working on this adventure. Okay, thank you. So you chose a uh, point and click adventure game because uh, you just love uh, this genre, right? Uh, this is the best way to tell some, some story, tell, tell a beautiful story, right? Yeah, I wrote uh, uh, what I think is going to be a really cool story that people is going to love. Mm-hmm. And since we don't have uh, like a budget to make a game like, I don't know, like Tomb Raider or something like that, we decided to do yeah. something more achievable. And all my team loves point and click adventure games. So we thought the story can be told in a point and click adventure game really, really nicely. And I think you're right. <laughs> this is the perfect genre to tell yeah. stories. But not very popular right now. <laughs> <laughs> adventure games is not. Um, as popular as they were as 30 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, because, you know, uh, adventure evolved in games like Tomb Raider or uh, Uncharted, things like this. This is like action and adventure all together. And there is not a lot of studios that do point and click adventure games. And most of them are quite tiny studios like ours that we try to do whatever we can without budget. So that's why it's hard to see really big point-and-click adventure games lately. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, what were your main inspirations? Could you tell us that? Uh... Oh, well, I'm I'm a really big fan of the X-Files TV show and from other TV shows like The Twilight Zone oh. or mm-hmm. Stranger Things, Doctor Who, this kind of science fiction things. So this is, uh, I would say, the main inspiration for the theme of the game. And then, of course, uh, the LucasArts uh, point-and-click adventure games. I, I really like the Sierra ones, but they are different. Like, for me, they are more serious uh, in a way that you die and, and stuff exactly. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make something that reminds people of the old uh, LucasArts game, like Monkey Island, Sam Max, Day of the Tentacle, uh, Full Throttle, these kind of games. So that's that's what we are working on, right? That's a very good idea, actually. Uh, okay, uh, I assume that uh, three minutes to midnight will be full of humor, right? Absurd humor, something like that, or uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, cool. <laughs> we are working really hard on every single sentence of this game to try to make it original, fresh, funny. You will have a serious theme, okay? Because the whole game is about the main character Betty Anderson that will wake up one day without memories. Mm-hmm. And she soon will realize that the rest of the town don't have memories of their own either. And then she will start noticing that there is something weird going on. And the whole thing is like a, a, a little plot to extinguish humanity. So that's quite serious. But this story will be told with funny and crazy puzzles and a tons of absurd humor. Oh, so... It sounds to me a little bit like uh, maybe Twin Peaks, something like that, because uh, uh, very serious uh, things uh, amalgamated with humor. So that's, I don't know if yeah. I understand correctly, but maybe. I, 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 I understand. The, the hard thing for me is to try to tell you what the game is like without doing any spoilers, because if I tell you it's yeah, a little bit like this TV show or like this chapter of this TV show, then you will certainly know what it's about and then it's going to be a spoiler. And uh, what about puzzles uh, in game? Will there be mostly inventory puzzles like 
in Monkey Island or most of LucasArts games, or maybe there will be some logic puzzles like in Myst, for example. Oh, we took the path like mm, the LucasArts games, like in every single aspect of this game. The only thing that we did with the puzzles that we have a lot of them. If you like puzzles, we have more than a hundred. And those puzzles, what we did is try to make them fun, crazy, but at the same time, logical. So when you see the solution of a puzzle, you will be thinking like, wow, that was quite elaborate. And even if they are crazy, you are always going to be guided. So in if you get, get lost, for example, you don't know what to do. I'm going to give you an example of our, our demo. In, in our demo, one of the characters gives you an empty sprayer, okay? In case you don't know what to do with it, uh, you can use the empty sprayer with this character that gave it to you in the first place. And then this character will tell you, well, Betty will say, uh, hey, you gave me an empty sprayer, and the character Pam will say, oh, I wonder, in a campsite by a huge lake, where can you possibly refill it? And then it will give you a clue. Depending on how easy is the puzzle that we designed for you, and if you ask for help to someone, the the more dumb they are going to make you feel for not figuring. <laughs> That's great, actually. <laughs> okay, and what about difficulty? Uh, how hard will be your game regarding today's standards? Well, we, we design well. I designed the game in order that when you start, it's going to be really easy, more focused in the story. So in the first chapter, the puzzles are a bit low on amount. And that amount will increase, like in, in amount of puzzles and difficulty of them. And it's a it's a balance because we have sometimes you will be, be you will be able to be working on two big puzzles at the same time, and those big puzzles have tiny small puzzles to 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 make them happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the difficulty depends a little bit on your skills on these kind of games. But as I told you, you are going to be always guided. You will never be lost. So if, for example, you need to do something for someone, that someone will give you clues of how to achieve it or will hint you that you can talk with another character and get more information or you can examine the things you got and get extra tiny clues. And we made it in a way that we will give you the information slowly. Like we will give you a little hint if that's not enough, you can get a bigger hint. And if that's not enough, then somebody will tell you, listen, you, you are dumb. This was this easy. You have to do that. No, <laughs> words, not with these words, but um, yeah. you feel like them. I should have figured it out by myself. Very cool idea. Uh, okay. Take... And uh, how long will a single playthrough take? F five, um, seven hours? No, we are talking about 12 hours oh. right now. That's but th this is before before we do the Q and A and the testing with uh, real users because we grow a lot of dialogue and probably uh, some sentences are going to be cut off from there. And if we see that some puzzles, uh, a lot of people is having problem with them, we are probably going to change them or remove them. So at, at this point, I cannot confirm exactly the the whole length. But what is designed at this point is 12 hours length. Okay, and tell me, uh, why did you decide on this type of graphic style? I mean, why 2D? Why not, for example, cell shading or something different? Why this this kind of graphic style? Uh, well, if, if I'm honest with you, I, I wanted to bring back the LucasArts games, okay? So for me, the, the art of Peter Chang or Steve Purcell is really impressive. So I, I really like that. But with a cleaner face, you know, it's it's like it's 30 years, 20 years since those games were released. And now we can do better. We can make better graphics. So what I wanted to do is LucasArts game, but with a fresh style, like our graphics are 4K. So we can really zoom in in the image without getting any pixels. Because mm -hmm. for me, there is enough pixel art uh, point and click adventure games that even if they are really good, for me, the pixel art style, it's, it gets tiring at some point. Yes, you're right. And yeah, um, exactly. Will the game include some some kind of Easter eggs related to adventure games of pop culture? Well, I, I'm I'm glad you asked. Uh, I don't know if you've seen our, our screenshots that we have on our yeah. website. 
Yep. Okay, if, if you want to check out, we have a, for example, a junkyard uh, screenshot. In that junkyard alone, there is six Easter eggs hidden. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, need to, we need to check that out later. <laughs> uh, okay. That's uh, a surprise for me. <laughs> no, they are really subtle. So, for example, unless you really know uh, what that is, that that Easter egg is about. Uh, you will see the scene and you will notice nothing. Okay. Sometimes it's uh, a sentence in a dialogue. Sometimes it's uh, something that we draw, especially in one scene, like the junkyard, for example. Um, I, I think that people who love pop culture and old adventure game classics, they will they will love it. And we have a, a counter because if you are able to find all the Easter eggs, you will get an achievement. Uh Okay, let me get back to inspirations uh, for a second, okay? Uh, what were your inspirations about the main characters, uh, the two main characters uh, specifically? Can you tell us that? Yeah, well, uh, as you said, we have two main characters. On one side, we have Betty Anderson, who yeah. is the youngest character we have. And she is uh, very brave, uh, naive, uh, with good heart kind of character. and. Mm -hmm. She will find herself in a very terrible situation and she will try her best to help everyone and try to to prevent the end of humanity, the, the, the extinction, okay? And on the other side, the counterpart, you have Eliza, who is Betty's mom, and she's the mayor of this town, okay? And as most of the mayors, not all of them, most of them, Eliza is only worried about winning the elections and she wants to keep being in power as long as possible. So when we play with Eliza, it's actually one year before all the events of this game. And we will be able to see how Eliza actions that you're going to control affect mm -hmm. the future of this town. So Eliza is more, how to say, it, not corrupt, but she will tell you whatever you want to hear in order. Oh, manipulative, to right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And maybe that, that would be a little bit strange question. Uh, <laughs> what about the chicken with shotgun? I just love that in your trailer. <laughs> wow. Well, we have a lot of crazy stuff like that, okay? Because in our trailer, we really wanted to show that this game has so many things, so so tiny details and, and big plot twists that we needed to show in one minute and a half uh, how crazy this game is. The part of the game, uh, I cannot make this spoiler, but it's something that is going to happen on Eliza's chapter that you will need to get some costumes in order to do something and it also involves the shotgun. So it's, it's really okay. hard to tell you that without making a spoiler because it's one of the best puzzles in the game. And No, 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 I... don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it, please. Don't spoil it. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Great. Uh, okay, and what about music inspirations? Uh, can you tell us something about that? I mean, uh, do you have some inspirations or it's just uh, from from your company, from your people? The, the music, we hired a freelancer. Uh, oh. His name is Guy John. Uh, we tried different artists before and we did some tests. With Guy, he understood perfectly what I wanted. Uh, for this game, what, what I want is the, a soundtrack that reminds a little bit like Monkey Island 2, where you were able to change locations and you never hear a break on the music, that you have these kind of seamless transitions. So it's and, like a remix, right, of many uh, mus music cues, right, like something like that? Well, um, without uh, getting too technical, what we do is, for example, if we are in Betty's room, and Betty's room has a, a, a track, a specific yeah. track for that location. When Betty goes to the living room, the music will adapt and change without you noticing that oh. you actually transition into the living room song. Because for me, it was really important that we don't have cuts or fade out, fade in kind of effects. Mm -hmm. So we invested a lot of time in programming this and a lot of time with the compositor to get this right. because. In some cases, we are in a crossroad where you can transition to six different scenes and the main song of that street needs to fit perfectly with the transition that is going to bring you to a church, 
to a park, to a high school, or to the city hall, for example. Okay. Uh, Vitek, do you have any questions? Um, maybe what do you think about the condition of today's adventure games market, especially in Spain? Well, in, in Spain, um, we had a couple of uh, very nice ones like Randas Mondi, uh, Monday and, and The Last Door. Uh, and Pendulo that I Studios game. Games. Yeah. Ah, Pendulo. Um, for example, Pendulo, I used to like them more when they used to do uh, pure 2D, like Hollywood Monsters or, Yester or Runaways. Do you have any ideas regarding next project after this game? Can you tell us something about this? Maybe a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I can tell you right a little bit. It's like we are working on, um, well, we want to do franchises like the old LucasArts thing, like you have Monkey Island on one side and you have Full Throttle or Day of the Tentacle. We are working in, uh, in a game that is uh, themed in space. And the name is Corellian 6. Corellian 6, okay. Yeah, and mm -hmm. what I can tell you is that with all the things we learn from designing Three Minutes to Midnight, this one is going to be really different and but really cool as well. Okay, cool. But it will uh, be a point and click adventure game oh, also. Oh, like, we we are we are just started working on it like this month, and we are going to start painting environments around end of April because it's when we finish painting Three Minutes to Midnight. And it's at this point I cannot share more with you, but probably as soon as I have the first screenshot, I will contact you and show you. Okay. That would be great, yeah. And tell me, uh, if your game is very successful, is there a chance to release it in a physical form, in a box maybe, collector's edition maybe, something like that? Or do you don't have uh, that kind of plans? No, we, we are actually doing a, a Kickstarter, uh, like four or five months before release. It's going to happen probably around July or August. Mm -hmm. And for the backers, we will have the classic uh, box with the same size as the Monkey Island box. And yeah. inside we will have like the, everything, like the hint book, a map of the town, um, a special comic that tells you a part of the story that you are only going to be able to discover in this comic book. And well, with all the Kickstarter stuff, like the t-shirts, posters, we will have something really cool. Well, uh, this I think is really cool that you know that there is always one backer that he wants to have something really exclusive and only for him. So we will have a character that will help Betty in a very important moment of the game. And it's going to be the backer that uh, gets that uh, reward. Okay, great. I will back it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, definitely. <laughs> I love physical releases and uh, with so many stuff inside. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> with a lot of stuff, a lot. You, you, a lot. You'll see it when, when we announce it, because we've been working for months on all the contents of this, this box, for example. For example, the, the inventory of Betty is a menu from Mike's Diner, which is an environment in our game. Uh -huh. and we will get the, the you will get the, the whole restaurant menu and you will be able to read all these crazy recipes that he has there. So that will be also inside the box. It's like a lot of details related to the game. We really wanted to make something that, um, not general things like beans or whatever. No, we wanted to use stuff that you will see in the game. And I yeah. think that a bit. Yeah, that, that would be great in context of a game, of a atmosphere of a game. Yeah, and story of a game. Yeah. Very good idea. Uh, Vitek? Oh, I don't have <laughs> any other yeah. questions. Yeah, that's all the questions we have for you. <laughs> so, uh, thank you once again for accepting our invitation. Yeah, thank you very uh -oh. much. Thank you for this conversation. Yeah, sorry. That, uh, thank you, you guys, for having me. It was really fun. Yeah, for us too. So, thank you for this convers you. conversation and uh, all well to you. <laughs> thank you. All the right. best. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.